What's up, guys? This is Revenge of the Jocks. I'm your host, Marty. Right now, I'm sitting down with Mark Leibovich, who is a New York Times Magazine national correspondent, also the author of the new book called Big Game, The NFL Dangerous Times. You're also a Patriots fan, so anyone that's a Patriots fan is a friend of mine. Absolutely, man. See, the NFL, I don't think, is built for crisis. They just are very reactive. Like, stuff hits them. Nike, Colin Kaepernick thing, classic example. The yeah. league doesn't take a position. They try, then they kind of pull back. They, they're just tied up all in knots. So you got Nike, you got Donald Trump, you got Colin Kaepernick filling the void. I wouldn't say of, of leadership, but the league is just sort of like... They never, the take a, they never step up. Because their whole thing is to protect that shield because yeah. for them that shield rep- is a dollar sign. Exactly. So, like, we don't want the shield to be involved in anything that would take dollars from it. The NBA does a pretty good job taking, I mean, you know, people. But the NBA, I think the NBA is different because. It's a different fan base. And they, the players, they promote the players. They don't protect mm-hmm. the team name. It's all Whatever about the, the players. Shield is. There's no yeah, shield there's no shield. Like, you don't even think right? about Jerry West being the logo of. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, who's the top players? And then when those players go out, the next generation take over. That, so it's. They totally celebrate. Agree. They celebrate the individualism. The more I step back from the game, I always look at the owners as like they're part of this country club, yeah. and instead of golf, they're entertainment or the guys on the football field. I think one of the great undertold stories in sports is the power of these thirty-two guys, and some of them are good. I yeah, mean, I like some of them. I mean, and <clears throat> you know, some of them don't like me very much anymore. But, <laughs> um, I mean, you know, to me of like that holy trilogy. I mean, I like Brady the best just because I. I just kind of like players better. Yeah. I just think that there's a more of an honesty around just using your bodies and sacrificing and also the intellectual approach. I mean, I think people underestimate how much like stuff you got to know. If I had to learn one of these playbooks, I mean, I would I'd, I would last two minutes. I mean, oh, so th- and every single team is a different language. Yeah. And then it's the same language, but spoken in different ways. Your profession before this was like all about it's all team environment, and it probably, I mean, freedom, like, gets to, you could do whatever you want when you're by yourself. Yeah, I mean, when you were the team all day, like, I think yeah. that's why I think a lot of guys suffer from an identity crisis. Yeah. Because you could lose yourself within a team. That's interesting. Especially when you've been a part of teams your entire life, and they tell you that mm-hmm. the team matters more than the individual. How did you, like, explore, like, creative outlets when you were in that regimented world of like football i think it took a long time for coaches to accept me mm-hmm. as a creative mm-hmm. right because there's not a lot of room to create in the game no. but i think they understand that as a person i'm healthier right. as a person when i'm allowed to create like i'm right. the happiest and the healthiest i've ever been as an individual mentally physically mm-hmm. now creating every day than i ever was when i was just playing when i played with the like in the patriots like when i had my individual meetings with my coaches and we'd go mm-hmm. through the plays i'll draw while we go through huh. the plays how did your creativity you know mesh with that world i think that they understood what kind of person i was mm-hmm. and they, they did a lot of research on me before they brought me in right and um the thing about me i would never been malicious you right. know i never did like i never been arrested never been to jail right. only thing i like to do is i just like to make shit and i like to speak my mind so right. i think what they understood like when i had my my film like they showed my and bill showed my animated film to mm-hmm. the team on family day during training camp robert Kraft, i was like hey I got my new book coming out. Mm-hmm. You think that we could roll it out in the Patriots store? So he's like, yeah, just talk to such and such. And they put my books in the Patriots store. So they were very supportive of me as a creative. Like That's even, great. Because people miss that about them. Yeah, like, so no one knows they them. support the individuals. What do you think will happen if Colin wins his case now that he's going to trial? Well, first of all, it's gotten a lot far than the owners thought it was going to get. Yeah, they, they thought this was going to go away like two weeks ago and the arbitrator was just going to say, all right, there's nothing here. And so that decision surprised me. It surprised a lot of people at the league. I don't know if he's going to win that or not, but the fact that it's getting closer, I think, makes a lot of people an- anxious. But I also think it's going to bring some people out in public because they're going to have to testify. And a lot of these folks don't like going out in public to testify. There's a lot of guys who are afraid yeah. to say things, even though they feel a certain way, because if it happened to Kaepernick or it happened to Eric Reed, I'm barely hanging on. Green right. Bay had a lot of young players that will come up to me and be like, I want to take a knee or I want to do this, or huh. is there somehow that I could participate? Mm-hmm. You know, you've been in the league for a really long time, yeah. you know, 11 years or whatever. What did you tell them? I said... I'm doing it so you don't have to. Like, if you want to raise your fist, if you yeah. want to do this, do it because you want to. But wow. remember that the other guys doing it as a league yeah. are doing it for you as well. You, like, used to raise your fist, right? What did you hear from fans? When you're the only person out there mm-hmm. and and you raise your fist 
everyone's staring at you. Everyone's looking at you. You could feel it on you. Like when I played in Green Bay, I would hear people say, nigger, you don't deserve to wear that jersey. You fucking suck. Is that like right? you don't belong in Green Bay. And they had wow. people, fans calling there to tell them to get rid of me because they didn't like the way I was as a it was person. That bad, huh? It gets bad from the DMs that you get from people yeah. who threaten to kill you to Twitter. Twitter, I mean, Twitter thumbs are the worst thumbs there yeah. are possible in the world. But like when people say that, and then my wife is in the stands. Yeah. You know, my daughter's next to my wife. She's sitting at the front. So if yeah. I hear, it, she hears it. And I bet, by the way, if football players had guaranteed contracts, and there was more support institutionally for, you know, an individual stand on something that was important, you'd probably have half the players, like, doing some kind of protest, right? Oh, definitely. They would definitely join in. Yeah, yeah, they would definitely join in. I mean, I'm always amused by the league saying, you know, if you want to protest, do it on your own time. And, like, meanwhile, you have, like, like a dozen owners giving money to Donald Trump's campaign. You had, like, Michael Bidwell, the owner of the – or the chairman of the Cardinals, like, coming out for, like um, – Justice Kavanaugh the other day. Yeah, it's like, we could do it, but y'all can't do it. I mean... Because you're the entertainment. Correct. Uh, NFL owners in the NFL League itself are, are far more active in politics by giving money to officials than you know than any anyone who's ever shown during the anthem right for me i always look at trump like he he's been bitter because he couldn't get into the nfl like he wanted to buy the bills i think he was on the usfl team yeah, at one the uh, new jersey generals in the 80s he wanted to merge with the nfl yeah he tried to buy a couple tried to buy the patriots before Kraft got it it was uh, so yeah, but now he's been trying for years to get in. So now I feel like a lot of times he attack it because he couldn't get in it. Now I got more power than you guys. You, I couldn't get in your league, so I'm gonna make sure that your league league does not see, see without me. I, I think he loves the he loves being seen as like manipulating events, especially these you know these billionaires who wouldn't have him in their club, and and also. Uh, he, and he gets to be right in the middle of the spectacle of American life, which yeah. is football. It's like it's which is a reality show. How much politics in sports is too much politics in sports? Well, I don't think you can avoid it, whether it's Colin Kaepernick or Donald Trump or, or whatever. I mean, these are really political times. Whether you're political or not, I mean, the issues are pretty, pretty you know, straightforward, whether it's, you know, racism, whether it's immigration or building walls or, or like, you know. We're a part of the world, and I think as a player, I think one of the biggest things we always talk about, me and my brother talking about, it's like, yeah, I'm a, I play in the NFL, but I'm still a black man in America. So I guess a week and a half ago, I, I went to um, Senator McCain's funeral in, in D.C., and uh, President Bush and President Obama both gave two of the, the eulogies, and mm -hmm. they didn't invite Trump. Like the McCain <laughs> family said that he's not welcome here, and that was kind of a big story. But Obama said at one point, so me and John McCain, we didn't agree on much, and you know he used to go at me all the time, but we never talked about this, and I never talked about it, but I used to have him up to the White House, and we would just, like after we were done yelling at each other, we would just talk. Yeah. And really, even though we disagreed on a lot of stuff, we never doubted that we were on the same team. Mm -hmm. And now you sort of wonder, like, Who's on? Like, are we really on the same team? Everyone says they miss the camaraderie of the locker room and the teammates. Do you miss that? No, I don't really have too many friends from sports. Like I was just mm -hmm. telling my wife this, I don't have too many friends from the ages of zero to twenty-one. Wow. Um, yeah. Like I don't like I don't have like childhood friends that are super. Like I have some I talk to from time to time, but I'm not mm -hmm. super close to them, like right. or anything like that. And I don't, and it's hard for me to connect right. because I wasn't a football guy. Some of my loneliest moments as a mm -hmm. person mm -hmm. were in the locker room. Really? Yes. Wow. Because I felt like such an outsider mm -hmm. where everyone else was connected on so many different things. And I just couldn't connect with them. Right. Not like they're bad people. Like on a football field, we connected very well because we spoke the same language. Do you feel like the people you played with are, are going like, to be well adjusted for life after they retire? No. Yeah. I think it's hard because I think there's a form of PTSD yeah. when players leave. leave because yeah. you got to think everyone that's playing has been the top player their entire life. Right. So from a young kid, that becomes your identity. Right. right? you known for how you perform in a sport. You take on that identity because it's right. celebrated. Right. Right. And when that's celebrated your entire life, and then you get to the top place where they celebrate it the most, right. which is the NFL, and once people stop celebrating you, yeah. it's like, now what?